Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This is a pretty special one. We have finally hit 75,000 of you who subscribe to this little channel. Thank you very much for sticking around. I have made a special cake to mark the occasion. It was supposed to be a single tier regular cake decorated in this style, but I was rummaging through my dummies because I didn't need to make it a real cake and how far have we come since like 2016, which is probably when I bought the dummies. The average height of a dummy was about four inch. I remember requesting five inch ones to make them look a bit taller. And I pulled them out the cupboard and thought, they are still not tall enough. Our cakes just seem to be getting taller and taller. I did find a tall one in my little cave of dummies, um, but it was a popcorn bucket shape. I had originally bought this popcorn bucket shape to make a wedding design out of that never happened. Um, so we have a popcorn bucket design instead for this tutorial. But I actually prefer it. I think it turned out really well. This is one of the cakes that I've made where I look back and go, I like that one. Um, hopefully you like it too. And we're going to start digging into some of the details in this tutorial. So I've got my dummy panelled around the sides. There's a full tutorial on panelling, which I'll leave linked below but I stick the sugar paste to my dummies with Trex. This is just a veg fat, the same as Crisco. It's then been stuck to the board with ganache. Now I'm cutting some thin strips out of my greaseproof paper using my handy quilting ruler. I'm just lining it up so all my strips are the same width. If you saw my Eddie Munson cake tutorial, you see it didn't go all that great, which is why I'm trying it again. I will not be defeated. I'm brushing some treks onto the back of the strips and I'm very carefully patting it onto my cake in a diagonal angle. Where it went wrong on the Eddie Munson cake is that anywhere you get treks, your airbrush colour is not going to stick to it. So I'm trying very hard to only get treks on the strips and not let it bulge out or get anywhere else. I'm just working on my grid pattern, which is very similar to what I painted on my studio wall in pink. And now, what feels like an eternity later, my grids are on. I've tried to keep the tracks contained to the strips, but I do know I do have the odd spot here and there. I didn't bother to do round the back of the cake as this was just for the tutorial and I ain't doing any more work than I need to. So I filled up my airbrush gun with some turquoise water-based airbrush colour. Everything I use will be linked in the description box. I'm concentrating on spraying directly at the grid as to not lift the strips with the power of the air. I just see these ones are starting to lift here, so any more spray and I would have made these a little bit more teal coloured instead of white underneath. Carefully start removing your pieces of paper for a very satisfying pattern underneath. As you can see between the two grids, you can see a tiny little smudge. So neatness really is the key here. Next, I've drawn out a wiggle shape on some greaseproof paper. I'm going to be cutting shapes out of sugar paste, mainly using wiggles, triangles and circles. You can also use a triangle cutter if you have one, or you can just hand cut them like I'm going to do. I'm first laying down some hot pink and I'm cutting out a large triangle to contain my numbers. Grab yourself plenty of these foam mats. I highly recommend them to sit your sugar paste pieces on to dry them from below as well as on the top. I'm laying down my wiggle shape and drawing around it with a Dresden tool to leave an impression and then I'm following that impression to cut it out with a scalpel. I'm also placing these on a foam mat to start to set. I'm also cutting out two different sizes of circles and more triangles. Here I've got a spare piece of foam core and I'm just using my quilting ruler again to mark out a little rectangle. I cannot recommend this enough, I use it a heck of a lot. I'm then using my scalpel to cut across those lines to pop out my shape. I want the corners a little rounded so I'm just using a circle cutter to mark on some curves and then cutting them out. To help sugar paste stick to your foam core, piping gel is best, especially along those edges. I'm laying some of that hot pink over the top, smoothing it down and then I'm flipping it over onto the foam mat to bring up and cover the sides.
Use your scalpel to cut off the excess overhang for a neat finish. A sharper blade will give you better results and the one I use is always linked in the description box. As well as this toilet seat method I'm showing here. This is how I cover all my boards and there is a separate tutorial on it. It just neatens up that bottom edge as well as not using too much sugar paste on your base. I'm now cutting out shapes again but this time in a deep blue. My initial shapes were cut in hot pink, yellow and blue and I'm using the deeper blue as a shadow for each of these shapes. I'm just sticking them on top of each other with water slightly offset. You want to do this with all of your shapes, yes even the wiggles. If this was your real cake, it would be bare ganache on the top, however you can feel free to cover it in a popcorn colour if you like to hide it a bit. I'm just dampening around the edges of my sugar paste and rolled out a long white sausage for the rim of the popcorn bucket. You want to pull that rim right to the edge as close as you can get it without it falling off. I'm then sticking on my shapes using the large triangle on the front for my numbers and then adding in the rest of the circles and wiggles. For my letters I did the same, tracing of the letters, cut them out in sugar paste and then I've picked them up on a piece of greaseproof paper using Trex. The back of the numbers have water on so they'll stick to my triangle. Press your numbers onto the triangle and tap them firmly on, slowly peeling away the greaseproof paper to reveal nice straight numbers. Here is my hot pink rectangle which I've just stuck a white triangle in the centre to create a YouTube play button and the great thing about foam core is the foam centre allows you to insert support sticks really easily. I'm just twisting my kebab stick right up into the centre to hold my button. I've stuck it in at a slight angle as I don't want it to sit flat on top of the popcorn. Now this will be easier to shove into a real cake because the dummy is a little bit firmer. Now I'm just topping the whole thing with real popcorn. I could have made this out of sugar paste if I wanted, but I didn't. So I got Adam to run to the shop and grab me some popcorn to quickly finish it off. But that's it. I actually really love this colour scheme and how it turned out. And remember, the key is to keep your treks just on the shape you're wanting to keep white. It can take such a long time to be so precise, but I think it's worth it. If you watch my vlogs, as well as the tutorials, some eagle-eyed viewers may recognise this design. It's actually based on my work bag. I bought this bag when I got the studio. I use it to carry my laptop, my order forms, all my bits and pieces between home and the studio. Um, and I thought it was very fitting to kind of replicate that on this special cake. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are just clicking on this video and you do not yet subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. My aim is to get to 100. Just because I want to say I got that silver play button. I know that's very sad, but it is, when you are so close, it's a pretty cool thing to reach. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next week.